Jacob Carruthers says that today we are arrayed in a great war to determine whether the doctrine and practice of white supremacy shall be overthrown. Recently the war, which is as old as the European intellectual riot, 250 years in fact, has escalated. Our ancestors in the 18th, 19th, and 20th century defended us amazingly well considering the imbalance in weaponry. Those guerrillas or old scrappers, as Anderson Thompson used to call them, developed a mighty strategy which we must consult as we begin the final battle. Yes, we are ready because they prepared the way. Our people are subject to an educational process and content that deforms African minds. This is so whether the individual student fails or succeeds vis-a-vis -vis the standard imposed by the system. That is, the A student is as much if not more damaged than the F student. Therefore, the battle to reestablish African education under the conceptualization and direction of African teachers is the sine qua non, Dr. Jacob Carruthers, Intellectual Warfare. The following is a partial listing of our African ancestral intellectual warriors, sisters and brothers who have traveled the road of cultural redemption before us. We call forth our African intellectual guerrilla warriors, those early defenders of the African way. Often in this day, they are referred to as the old scrappers. In their own day, they were referred to as race man and race women, Ethiopianist, Garveyites, African or black nationalist, African redemptionist, and Pan-Africanist. We call forth the names of our African ancestral intellectual guerrilla warriors so they can live in the present within us. Sarah Parker Raymond, 1826 to 1894, born Salem, Massachusetts, anti-slavery lecturer, abolitionist, and medical doctor. With her brother, Charles Lennox Riemann, they traveled across the United States and Europe calling for the abolishment of slavery. While living in England, Mrs. Riemann attended the Bedford College for Ladies from 1859 to 1861. She moved to Italy and enrolled in Santa Maria Nuova Hospital as a medical student where she received a diploma certifying her to practice medicine in 1871. Chief Alfred Sam, 1879 to 1930, ship owner, entrepreneur. His business efforts to aid African Americans in relocating to Ghana were opposed by the British government. Arthur A. Schomburg, 1874, 1938. Born San Juan, Puerto Rico, noted historian, author, and world traveler. Mr. Schomburg was a member of the UNIA and co-founder of the Negro Society for Historical Research. He donated his massive collection of books about African people to the Public Library of New York. Jegna of John Henry Clark. Dr. Clark was a young man of 19 years of age when he began to learn African history from Mr. Schomburg in New York. Prince Saunders, 1775 to 1839. Born Connecticut or Thetford, Vermont. Statesman, scholar, teacher, diplomat, and historian. Mr. Saunders was a founding member of the African Lodge of Masons. He served as a diplomat for the nation of Haiti. He also assisted in the development of the Haitian school system. He died in Haiti in 1839. Joseph Ephraim Casely Hayford, 1866-1930, born Cape Coast, Ghana, lawyer, 
journalist, publisher, and author. Mr. Casely Hayford was a West African nationalist and brilliant writer. He was a student of Edward Wilmot Blyden. Two of his best known books are Ethiopia Unbound and Studies in Race Emancipation. Martin Robeson Delaney, 1812 to 1883. Born Charleston, Virginia. Journalist, author, and medical doctor. Dr. Delaney was one of the first African officers in the Union Army. He held the rank of major. Dr. Kelly Miller, 1863 to 1939. Born Winsboro, South Carolina. Educator, writer, and activist. Dr. Miller served as the head of the Department of Sociology and Dean of the School of Arts and Sciences at Howard University in Washington, D.C. Cyril Briggs, 1887 to 1966. Born Brown Pastor Nevis in the Leeward Islands. Journalist, publisher, editor, and activist. Mr. Briggs was kicked out of the Communist Party for being too committed to African people. He was one of the most influential organizer activists in Harlem. He formed a rival group to the Universal Negro Improvement Association called the African Blood Brothers. Dr. Jesse E. Moreland, 1863-1940, born Coldwater, Ohio. Dr. Moreland was a graduate of Howard University's Theological Department. He developed one of the most extensive collections of books on African people. The Moreland Collection is now housed at Howard University. Richard Allen, 1760-1831. Born Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Militant, nationalist. Mr. Allen used his church pulpit to work for the freedom of African people. Born into slavery, Mr. Allen purchased his freedom at the age of 17. He was one of the founders of the African Methodist Episcopal Church. Joseph Robert Love, 1839 to 1914. Born, Nassau, Bahamas. Journalist, social activist. A graduate of the University of Buffalo, New York. He resided in Jamaica and Haiti. He was also the mentor of a young Marcus Garvey in Jamaica. Octavia Victoria Rogers Albert. Born Oglethorpe, Georgia. Teacher, author, and minister. The home of the Alberts was used as a place where enslaved Africans could go to learn how to read and write. Mrs. Albert's book of slave narratives, The House of Bondage, was published after her death. Caroline Virginia Steele Wiley Anderson, 1848 to 1919. Born Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Physician, abolitionist, and educator. Carolyn V. Steele Wiley Anderson was a daughter of Latia and William Steele who were founders of the Underground Railroad. Education was very important to the Steele family and their daughter shared the same passion. In 1865, she entered Auburn College where she was the youngest in her class and the only black woman. While teaching at Howard University, she enrolled in Howard Medical School in 1873 and transferred to the Women's Medical College of Philadelphia where she graduated in 1878. Ella Josephine Baker, 1903-1986, born Norfolk, Virginia, political organizer, activist, and educator. Mrs. Baker was a major force on shaping the political voice of African Americans during the 60s. She was a member of the NAACP. 
National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, and the, the director of the SCLC, the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. She was also a founding member of the Virginia Federation of Colored Women's Clubs. Janie Porter Barrett, 1865-1948, born Athens, Georgia, educator, activist, and social reformer. Mrs. Barrett graduated from Hampton Institute in 1884. She formed the Locust Street Social Settlement and recruited Hampton students to teach in the settlement. Delia Leontium Beasley, born Cincinnati, Ohio, writer and journalist. At age 12, she began writing for the Cleveland Gazette and at age 15, she had her first column published in the Ohio Inquirer. In 1910, she wrote the book, The Negro Trailblazers of California. Her efforts caused the white newspapers of California to stop using the terms nigger and darky when referring to African Americans. Marita Bonner, 1899-1971, born Boston, Massachusetts, writer and educator. Mrs. Bonner was a remarkable woman. She attended and graduated from Radcliffe College from 1918 to 1922. Mrs. Bonner was a mother of three children and an award-winning author and playwright. She wrote plays and essays about the negative effects of urban living on African Americans. Her works influenced Richard Wright. Mary Ann Shod Carey, 1823 to 1893, born in Wilmington, Delaware anti-slavery activist, educator, and writer. Mrs. Carey was born to free African parents who were agents of the Underground Railroad. She inherited their commitment to her people. She opened and operated schools for African Americans in Canada and the United States as she educated herself. In 1849, she published Hints to the Colored People of North America and in 1852, she published Notes on Canada West. She received a law degree from Howard University in 1870. She may have been the first black woman to receive a law degree in the United States. She is known for this statement. Self-reliance is the fine road to independence. Olivia America Davidson, 1854 to 1889, born in Virginia, educator, activist, and founder of Tuskegee University. Educating black people was Mrs. Davidson's love and specialty. She started teaching at the age of 16. She met and married Booker T. Washington and they had two sons together. He says this about her work in helping him run Tuskegee. The success of the school, especially during the first half dozen years of its existence, was due more to Miss Davidson than anyone else. Henrietta Vinton Davis, 1860 to 1941, born in Baltimore, Maryland, actress, lecturer, and activist. Mrs. Davis was responsible for helping to build the UNIA as a worldwide organization. She was one of the founding directors of the Black Star Line and became the fourth assistant president general of the UNIA in 1922. Mr. Garvey called her the greatest woman of the Negro race today. Sarah S. T. Garnett, 1831 to 1911, born in New York, activist and educator. Mrs. Garnett was an educator in New York. She taught in the famous African Free School of New York. She was appointed principal of a Manhattan public school in 1863. Mrs. Garnett was briefly married to Henry H. Garnett, who died soon after the marriage. Mrs. Garnett was active in many black women organizations like the National Association of Colored Women. She founded the Equal Suffrage League. She also attended the first Universal Races Congress in London, England in 1911.